Okay, you're rolling. So chapter 25 is where we will start this morning. It is the manicuring chapter, and it is on page 849 in your textbook. Okay, so we are going to get really deep into the nail services chapter because that is where most diseases come out of the salon. So there is a nail disorder and diseases chapter that we will also cover, but we are going to do the equipment and tool side, dive really deep into that and talk about the areas where and why diseases do come out of the salon because of nail, nail services. So why do you think that that is? Just off the top of your head. Yes, Jay. Fingernail dirt is a big one. Why else? Keep them out of bacteria on your hands right now? Yep. Your hands have the most bacteria on your body. Your hands have a lot of bacteria on the body. Let's dive a little bit deeper into it. How many of you have ever went to a nail salon and the person used the same file on you that they used on the person before? Mm -hmm. We've never been to a nail salon. Never been to a nail salon. Okay, that's a very common thing. So in the state of Kansas, they require that all tools and implements that are disposable, which is one time use, be thrown in the trash. That is because, think of a nail file. It is made of cardboard. So what is cardboard? It is extremely porous and absorbent. So whenever you go to put that into the barbicide, there's no physical way for you to kill everything on that nail file. Um, how many of you have gotten cut whenever they have, you have gotten the nail service? Yes. So it is also one of the most likely places that there's going to be blood-borne pathogens present in the service. When you're cutting hair, um, you might accidentally cut somebody with your clippers around the ear. But really, you're more in danger of cutting yourself when you're cutting hair than cutting the client. So with a nail service, you can cut them with the clippers, you can cut them with the nippers, you can cut them with the nail file, you can cut them with a buffer, um, the drill you can cut. So there's just more exposure to blood-borne pathogens with nail services than there is with any other service. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So. There are different tools that you can use during a nail service. You have equipment, implements, materials, and products. 
So your equipment is going to be things like your nail table, your chair, your light that you use for shellac. That's all considered equipment. Implements are the tools that you use to do the actual service. That's gonna be like your nail pusher, your clippers, your nippers. Your materials is anything else that is needed for the service but it can be thrown away. And then your products are going to be your nail oil, your polish, things like that. There is a difference. This is also something that they very likely will ask you on your state board test, is what the difference between all of these are. Okay, equipment, your table, lamp, client technician chairs, gloves, finger bowl, disinfection container, client arm cushion, service cushion. So you can see those things here. The plant is not part of the service. It could be your gauze and wipe container, trash containers. Okay, so what are we seeing? What is equipment? What is the trend we're seeing with equipment? What is that? It's permanent item. It's a permanent item that you're not going to remove from the table. It's the things you need in order to do the service, but they don't physically do anything with the service. You know, your terry cloth mint, stuff like that, um, you know, that you're going to use those during the service. But... This is everything you need to do the service, but you don't physically do the service with. Implements are going to be everything that is reusable that you physically use during the service. Things that are metal, nippers, tweezers, your pusher. Now there's wooden pushers and there's metal pushers. So would the wooden pusher be reused or thrown away? Thrown away. What about the metal pusher? Reused. Why? Because it's easier to wipe down. You can run it through, it's disinfectable, yes. So sanitation and disinfection are two different things, okay? Sanitation is your cleaning is going to be the removal of debris, and then you have sanitation and disinfection. So we go through both of, both of those things when we do dispense. Okay, implements are going to be your disposable items. That is the wooden pusher that I was just talking about. Um, they're going to have a nail brush and brushes and applicators. Now, the nail brush, we have just eliminated from our service. I believe you did get one in your kit. Um, we have just eliminated that, and we do have the clients just wash their hands because um, the nail brush, those bristles can be hard to sanitize and disinfect. Materials continued are going to be your files and buffers, your two- or three-way buffer, disposable or terry towels, Gloss, cotton pads, plastic, or metal spatulas. So um, with KVOC, the biggest thing is going to be the nail files. All of these items need to be thrown in the trash, but he has told us that if he sees one nail file that looks like it's been used, he, there's no room for error on the nail supplies. So he will do a fine for one nail file being used. So that's something that we just cannot mess around with. Plus it's where diseases come from. Um, pedicuring, there was a really bad strand of flesh eating fasciitis that went around about five or so years ago and they linked it to a pedicure salon. Um, so whenever you are thinking, oh, this is going to be so expensive because we have to buy all of these throwaway products over and over again, it does, the cost, uh -huh. the cost does add up, but um, in the end, a lawsuit for spreading a disease would be much more expensive. So it's better to just make sure you're covering yourself and your clients and not spreading any diseases by throwing these items away and not reusing them. All right, professional cosmetic products. So polish remover, nail creams and oils, cuticle removers, and nail bleach. Um, these are all going to be your products, so anything that can be used on the nail. Now, I have had students ask me before, well, how is nail polish sanitary? Because it is used from one person to the other without getting ran through any type of um, barbicide disinfectant. So, the reason why nail polish is okay for us to use on multiple people is because we have gone through all the steps for cleaning before we get to that service and it has products in it that do kill bacteria in the bottle. Um, so it has formaldehyde in it, that's a big one. 
that does end up killing anything that could be considered contagious, a contagious disease. All right, so here is some more um, products. We have our base coat, polishes, a hardener, and a top coat. Um, so hardeners are getting, have always been popular, but they're getting even more popular with all of these shellac and removable nail polishes and acrylics that we're using. The maintenance of your nail is so important. So that is going to come through the nail hardener whenever you're putting that on. Has anyone used a nail hardener or uses a nail hardener? Yes? Okay, I really love Nail Envy by um, C&D. It's a really good one, but there's also some more that you can use, but that's gonna be a staple to have on your shelf during your manicure. They also have started making them where they put hardeners in the base coats of polishes, so that helps. You don't have to wait for the nail hardener to dry. You can just put it on in the base coat, and it helps. It's has become more of a preventative maintenance now for damaging the nails. Okay, we have nail polish dryers, hand cream and lotions, nail conditioners, and sunscreens of the hands. Sunscreen has become a, a lot more popular. Why do you think sunscreen for the hands has become more popular in the last five to 10 years? Uh, they want to prevent skin cancer. It won't prevent, prevent, but it can slow it down. Correct. And it um, helps keep the skin off of it. Okay, so. Yes, we're using UV lights. You, yes, UV lights for the nails. That is the big one. So that is essentially a tanning bed. The UV nail lights are a tanning bed on a small floor. If you were to put your hands in there every single day, you would eventually start to see um, a little bit of color. Now, with what we're exposing to once a you know once a week or once a month that they're getting to, it's not going to develop any type of color to the skin, anything like that. And it is in there for a very short amount of time. But eliminating that risk and using a lotion with a sunscreen, um, especially if you are doing your own nails or you are sitting in front of the light for multiple sessions a day, that's gonna be an important step for you and something you might consider is getting a lotion with a sunscreen in it. Okay, so we have the three steps to the basic manicure. You have your pre-service. That's gonna be your setup, your preparation, cleaning your tools. Um, it's going to be getting, you know, if you know what color your client wants, getting that color on the table. If you don't know what they want, what could you go ahead and set out? <coughs> the color wheel thing. Like color wheel, wheel, yes. Or stitches. go ahead and do the base and top coat because you know you're going to have to use those things, right? You know the base and top coat are going to be used with every service. So go ahead and get those out. And then whenever you walk them over to the nail polish, um, that can be really a time killer. So what I like to do, instead of walking them to the nail polish and standing them in front of 150 different colors to pick from, um, I kind of like to go at it from the angle of what color are you thinking about today? And then I go and get three or four of that color and I set it on the table. And I say, if you don't like any of these, we can look at some different ones. But instead of handing them a book with all the colors, because how many of us have done that? How many of us have sat in the chair, we're getting ready to get our toes done, they hand us the book and you have no clue what color you want. Has that happened? To yes, I'm the worst. And I always end up picking the same color. Turquoise or like a red? Yes, yes, mine's black or, black or turquoise. I'm going with one of those, but I still get overwhelmed with the, the selection of colors. So by eliminating that and having your base and top coat on the table, and then taking three or four grays and blacks to the table or three or four different types of blues. Or if they say, I want red. Well, how many reds are there? Oh, Hundreds, right? So maybe do a maroon, a red, and like a true red, a maroon, and then a brown red. And start with those. And they're like, well, I like this one, but it's a little dark. Okay, well now I know what tone we're looking for. So I can go get one in that tone that's a little bit lighter. So that's something if you know you have an indecisive client that can help eliminate some of that. Um, now, whenever you are dealing with nail services, I mean, with any service we have, time is money, right? So whenever they're spending 30 minutes picking a color, 
that's gonna push you out 30 minutes for your next service. So getting to know your clients and knowing which ones are indecisive um, and which ones are gonna pick it on the first time. If you know they're gonna go over there, they're gonna pick the same color every single time, then go ahead and just have that on the table because time is money. Time is a cosmetologist's worst enemy, is time and perfectionism. So make sure, and it's easy to really become a perfectionist with nails. So make sure that you are using your time wisely and doing those steps that help make the service shorter so that, because you have dry time with nails that you don't have necessarily with other services or like shellac. Um, shellac is gonna be in the light, it's dry. But with a basic manicure, which is what we're doing today, it's going to, um, you're gonna have to have factor in that dry time of the nail. The post service is going to be um, carry, caring for client after procedure and your cleanup is gonna be a post service. If you do a lot of nail services, I would suggest buying multiple sets of nail implements because you have to run them through the barbicide, no exception. Your tools have to be disinfected and sanitized. So you are going to um, want more than one set because that's at least 20 minutes that you're gonna have to run it through disinfection. All right, hand washing prevents the spread of communicable diseases. What is the difference between a communicable disease and a contagious disease? Do you know? Contagious means like anybody can get it. You can give it to anybody, but yes. I don't know what communicable means. Yes. Where it's only can go to certain people. So basically, communicable has to do with distance. So communicable can be airborne. Contagious can also be airborne, but communicable is going to be um, within distance. So you're at. Why do you think you're at risk for a communicable disease? Because you're up close. You're up close and personal. Yes. So it's going to be on the skin. A communicable diseases. It's not going to be airborne. It's going to be on the skin. Uh -huh. So by being in that close proximity and touching the person, um, you're going to be in their bubble. So it's going to hand washing is going to be a big um, deal for a manicure to keep from spreading those communicable diseases. Wash hands before and after each client. Have clients wash hands before service. Provide clean nail brushes, hand sanitizers. Do not replace hand washing. Why is that? Because they don't kill all of the bacteria. Why else? Because it doesn't get rid of the dirt or anything. Yes, it doesn't. Even if it kills the bacteria or the virus, it's still on the hands. It doesn't remove it. So you have dirt and debris still on the hands, and that can actually make um, the shellac and polish not adhere to the nail and not dry correctly. So that is, um, and hand sanitizers are often have an oil and alcohol base. So they have to have both because that way it's not completely drying out your hands from the alcohol. So it usually has some type of a moisturizer in it and that will make shellac not stick to the nail. You can't have any type of nail oil or lotion or anything like that um, on the nail or else it will not stick and it will bubble. So that's another big reason why. You don't want to use a sanitizer. All right, so in your book, you have the 10-step consultation method. So the consultation is going to be really important because you want to make sure you're understanding what your client needs. Now, when you go through your workbook, you will write out the 10-step consultation methods. Um, and it's also in haircutting uh, and chemical texture services, stuff like that it is going to be um, listed those 10 step consultation methods. But what the consultation is, is simply getting to an agreement on what the client wants. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a scenario. The scenario is, I come in, I have, I'm a nail biter, I bite my nails, so I have no nails. And I say, I want really, really long nails. Okay, I want them like to here, but I don't want any acrylic on my nails. I just want polish. Is that going to be achievable? No. <laughs> Not at all. Okay, but I don't know that. All I know is I saw the cashier at Walmart had really long, pretty nails, and they said they were her nails. She didn't have acrylic, so why can't I have that? Because you bite your nails. Okay. 
so, but I don't know that because I'm a client. I didn't go to cosmetology school, so I don't know that that's not an option. So the consultation method is going to be about making realistic expectations. So you want to under promise and over deliver. A phrase that you should have in your vocabulary right now is I will get you as close as I possibly can. So that's not saying it's gonna look just like the picture because what generally happens when somebody brings you a picture of something is they like the way the person looks and they think if they get that haircut, they're gonna look like that person. So a good tool is to say, okay, I want you to put your hands on that person in the picture's face. Do you still like the haircut? No, you just liked how Halle Berry looked in the haircut, <laughs> right? So that's, nails are the same thing. The consultation is going to be the same way across the board. It's getting to an understanding of what you're going to leave with today, okay? So if I don't tell you, it's gonna take 10 times to get you to that icy blonde, and you leave with chicken yellow hair today, but I didn't tell you that, it's gonna be pretty shocking, right? Mm -hmm. But if I go through the process with you of saying, this is what you're gonna leave with today, then it's not so shocking when they leave with it. So what, what could we offer with my nail scenario? What could we do with that? What could be some things of compromise? Well, if she doesn't want acrylics at all, you could offer to just paint them. Okay, maybe it's just the heart design. Maybe she just liked the heart on the cashier's nail. So we can do that, right? It just won't be as long. So just being honest with your clients and talking. Offer solutions, don't just say, no, it can't happen. JC, were you? No, like the hard, like a dip nail or something to help grow the nail out. To help grow the nail out, do some maintenance services. And okay, so we're gonna get you on some vitamins and some. we're gonna do nail hardeners and have you come in for maintenance routines to where if you have a dip nail on, like JC was saying, you can't bite them. So we can, we can get there, but it's just not gonna happen today. But don't just say, it's not gonna happen. I have heard hairdressers say that. So then where's that client gonna go? To someone else. To someone that can help them get to where they want to be. All right, choosing a nail shape. So we have the shape and the definition. So the square nail is gonna be completely straight across here. The free edge is not gonna have much of a round. It's gonna be pretty much just at about a 45 degree bevel. The squoval nail is gonna be the same but it's gonna have a softer edge. So this is going to be um, a little bit rougher. You may scratch yourself, you know, stuff like that. Kids, if you have kids or working, it's gonna catch more. So this sometimes is a better option for more of a high maintenance job, um, stuff like that. Round is going to have no corners. So it's going to be completely rounded all the way. The oval is gonna come out to a point a little bit more here. It's the washer. Yeah. I think. Is that the washer that we're hearing? Yeah. Um, so the round nail is not going to have an edge, but can you kind of see how it goes? Like it has a little bit of a softer edge right here than the round. Yeah. But the big indicator for oval is it's going to protrude out just a little bit more. And then you have the pointed nail. So these are the five basic nail shapes. But what are some more that we're seeing right now? Coffin, Coffin, and ballerina. Coffin is popular right now. What's the one that goes out <laughs> from the oh, nail? Yes. Yeah, ew. Those are so ugly. They are ugly. Yes. And then, but are you gonna say no? No. I'll no. take your money. I'll take your money. I'll do that yeah. for you. Each their own. And ooh. don't don't don't. I, that's gonna happen a lot. I'm just warning you now. So what else do we have? Almonds. Is popular right now. Stiletto. Stiletto. We have all kinds of nails that, but this is the basic nail shape. So you're gonna have to have somebody come in with really long natural nails to do a coffin, right? So what are we seeing? Coffin, almond, point, you know, the pointed, the duck nail. What are we seeing those out of? Acrylics, not a natural nail. So natural nail, you're really gonna lean more towards these shapes. 
Okay, when choosing a nail color, um, I actually have to say I disagree a little bit with this slide. Um, so you do want um, to you do want to follow these, but I'm not going to coordinate with every outfit. Nails are something that you're going to wear for weeks. Do what? Did someone say something? Pick what you want. Yeah, you want to go off of what you like, or maybe you're picking it off of an event that you're going to, but you're probably not going to take them off right after the event. Um, and then complement skin tone. I do have some colors I personally think match with my skin tone better, but that's not going to make me not pick the other colors, right? So don't um, discourage colors if clients are liking those. Okay, and it's not unusual after you get done for the client not to like the color. So that can be something if you have time to repaint, you can. Um, but a lot of the time you don't, so you just are going to have to sell it that when they come back next time, you won't pick that color. We'll do something maybe that complements your skin tone a little bit better next time, maybe you'll like that. So these are um, bullets to go off of, but don't just stick with those. You want to allow the client to be um, creative and get the color that they want, even if you don't like it. Okay, applying polish. You always want to put a base coat. Why is that? And it also helps whenever you are looking at damage. Um, the nail polish is going to, the base coat is going to have a protective layer. Um, whereas the nail polish is going to be a little bit harsher. So it can stain, it can damage, it can dry the nail out. So those base coats are designed to prevent that from happening. Um, then you're going to do two coats of polish. You want to try to cover the nail in three strokes. So we're going to go over that whenever we do our demo. But if you can do three passes, that is going to make the polish level out better. You don't want it to get so thick that A, it won't dry, and B, it gets clumpy. So you can over polish the nail to where it will not dry it and then it will smudge. How many of us have done that? Yes. Keep going because there's a keep going and now it's not drying two days later and our sheets are sticking to our nose, right? Yeah. We've all had it happen. Ew. It's happened. Ew. Okay, so then you have top coat. Top coats now are designed to dry quickly. Um, they are designed to protect the nail and sometimes even have that nail hardener in it. So top coats also prevent chipping. If you don't apply that top coat within probably 24 hours, you will have a chip. So top coat is extremely important. Um, thin, even coats create maximum smoothness, maximum smoothness and minimum drying time. So we have a basic manicure um, in the picture here and you can see not all of her nails are even the same shape. So that can happen from time to time. All right, men do benefit from manicures as well. So who, um, who can you think of that is maybe a man that would benefit from a manicure? My boyfriend, my dad, my grandpa. What do they all, do? Um, my my dad is a, a, a mechanic. Okay. My boyfriend works on the railroad mm -hmm. and my grandpa's diabetic. Okay, all three. What What else? If you're a salesman. Salesman, yeah, that's a big one. Do you know we look at people's hands a lot of the time before we look at their faces? Well, especially if you're showing something off like yeah. this car. Or like maybe the CEO of a company, someone who's in a business role. So, did we just name off several professions that could benefit? Mm -hmm. Yes, so all men can benefit from manicures. Um, so you're gonna do the same thing um, it says same as basic without colored polish, but um, I've actually, we've had several men that have come in that have gotten polish. So generally you will either do like a clear coat or a nail hardener, um, or you'll just buff the nail to a shine. But polish is something that everyone can have on their nails. Okay, the massage benefit. So it doesn't just feel nice whenever you go get a manicure and they massage their, your hands. There is a reason for that. Um, it promotes blood circulation, relaxes the muscles, relieves pain, and soothes and relaxes the clients. 
All right, general movements. Um, we will go over these. These are the same across the board for facials, pedicures, and manicures. So you have effleurage, petrissage, tactament, vibration, and friction. We will dive into what each of those are whenever we do the basic manicure. All right, special manicures. We have spa manicures, which include massage and exfoliation. Um, you have a theme manicure. What is a theme manicure? Like Halloween or Christmas, Valentine's. Yes. Wedding. Wedding could be a theme. Wedding. Yeah. All of those are theme. Any type of event. Any type of event or holiday or celebration um, could be a themed manicure. Aromatherapy, you're going to use different types of essential oils. So the massage and these steps are going to be for basically any part of the skin. So it can be used for facials and it can be used for manicures. All right, the paraffin wax treatment, you're going to have a petroleum-based product that has excellent sealing properties to retain moisture in the skin. Um, you're gonna have a heating unit. I don't know if you have seen ours back in the dispense room, but it is a paraffin bath is what that's called. Um, in the state of Kansas, they do not allow us to dip like this. So this picture, they're dipping the hands. Um, that with the bath only getting to 125 to 130, it actually is not hot enough to kill anything. So we have bags that are shaped like hands. Sometimes they have hand holes. Sometimes it's just an open bag. You will scoop and pour into the bag and then put the bag on the hands. We will do this this week. And then you will put the wax will dry with the bag. So what the bag does is it actually helps to seal the moisture in where this is gonna dry really fast. So it's not gonna get all of those um, moisturizers are not gonna absorb into the skin. So we see a lot of these um, during the winter whenever people's nails and cuticles will crack from the dryness we see quite a few paraffin dips, but that is how we do them. Um, it's going to be with a bag, not dipping, just for safety and health reasons. The same thing with pumice stones. So if you, they have said pumice stones, you have to use a fresh stone every single service, because if you were to take a pumice stone, even though it's a rock, and put it in a crock pot with hot water after it's been ran through barbicide, oil will still come off of it. And so they have um, asked and are making it a lot to where pumice stones are considered a uh, throwaway disposable item, not a permanent item. So remember those in the salons. Because sometimes it's easy to take the easy way out, right? And just dip the hands in. But for sanitary reasons, you have to take the extra step and put it in the bag. All right, nail art, you have freehand, airbrush, glue-on, three-dimensional, simple to complex, portrait, and modern. So I have seen more uh, people starting to wear press-on nails in the last probably two to three years than I've seen my whole career. Um, they're starting to get the glue to where they'll last for quite a while, and the nail shapes are starting to be more modern. So you're seeing people kind of go from the getting acrylics for events, for special events, to just doing press-ons. And sometimes people will want you to paint and do nail art on a press-on versus on an acrylic because they just want it for one night. So that is starting to become super popular. So here's some designs. These are gonna be really intricate designs. Um, that can be done. Not by me, but people are talented. Does anyone here interested in nail art? I do. Do nail art? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's funny. I can like, only do the middle one. That's about it. The middle one? I can do the dots, maybe. What do you tell them if they come in and they're like, oh my gosh, I want this. So it's going to be during the consultation yeah. that if you don't feel like you can do it, you probably need to pass it to somebody in the salon that can. Or be realistic that, you know, you want this and I'm at this level. So be realistic during your consultation. Okay, so we are going to go over, um, during our practical class after morning break, we are going to go over these uh, for the practical class procedures. 
So we will do them all throughout the week. They won't all be done today, but these are things we will learn this week. Okay, this will be on your Blackboard page, so you can do the summary and review. What questions do we have? Yes. So are nail printers for everybody? Like can be for everybody. Um, more for people who have are recovering from taking like acrylics that have been worn for a long time off or a damaged nail, but they will they can make your nail if you don't have any issues. They can make your nail too hard and brittle and dry it out. So um, I would just kind of use your best judgment as a professional on who needs it, but that's gonna be, the damage is gonna come from using it every day versus using it the one time they're in your chair that month. Once a month's not gonna hurt anybody. Good question, Kimmy. Any other questions? You do have to use barbicide. You cannot use a Lysol wipe. Lysol wipes do not kill all um, the diseases from bloodborne pathogens. So you do have to use barbicide. They do have barbicide wipes that you can purchase. Every time I've been cut out of the nail salon, they have never done this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ever. That's why diseases get spread. Yeah. My mom's They're just like, oh, you're fine. Yeah. And visit her toes, and now she has like 
her toenail is falling off and she calls it her old lady yep. toe and it's like all purple and green and off of like her nail. She took a couple months to go get it off. Oh, she did. Okay. She's on antibiotics now. Okay, so you can see everything is going back into the bag. So you're not going to take your gloves off quite yet. Your gloves are the last thing that you're going to take off. So you're going to clean everything, including the containers, because blood splatters. And you don't know where it has splattered. So you're going to clean the table, the sanitizer, your container, everything that is on the working area that you cut the person or cut yourself. And then everything's going to go back into the bag. And if you do not have a biohazard bag on hand, you will double bag with another Ziploc and you will label the outside bag biohazard. We will make blood spill kits for everybody. So we will make these, but we do have some already made in the event somebody gets cut. And then it will go into the other bag labeled biohazard. And then that will go into the trash. And then you will use hand sanitizer. Probably just go wash your hands would be the best option with really hot water. But if in the event you don't have that, you definitely want to use hand sanitizer. So, okay. So if you could go ahead and pause our video, I'm going to go get the blood spill steps off the printer. 